You might have seen this type of equation where there are no vertical bars and we need to solve for x. They are super easy to solve, right? But today, instead of those simple ones, we have an equation with vertical bars, which are called absolute value equations. These absolute values make the problem look tricky, but if we move step by step, it actually becomes very logical and even fun. Our equation is the absolute value of x equals the absolute value of 2 times x minus 3. First of all, what does absolute value mean? Draw a number line like this. Think of absolute value as the distance from zero on a number line. This means it is never negative. For example, the absolute value of negative 3 is just the distance of negative 3 from zero on a number line, and thus it is 3, and the absolute value of 3 is simply 3. Now before we jump into solving, let's pause for a moment and really understand how absolute value works when the inside is something like a times x plus b. The rule is simple. The absolute value just checks whether the inside is positive or negative. If the inside is already positive, then the absolute value does nothing, and we simply keep it as a times x plus b. But if the inside is negative, then absolute value flips the sign by putting a minus in front of the whole expression. For example, the absolute value of 2 times x minus 3 will either stay as 2 times x minus 3 when that inside is 0 or positive, or it will become minus of 2 times x minus 3 when that inside is negative, right? To make this more concrete, suppose x equals 0. Then 2x minus 3 equals minus 3, which is negative. So the absolute value of 2x minus 3 will equal minus 2x minus 3, which gives plus 3 when we put x equals 0. On the other hand, if x equals 2, then 2x minus 3 equals 1, which is positive. In that case, the absolute value of 2x minus 3 just stays the same, and it gives 1. This is why, when solving equations with absolute values, we always split the number line into regions depending on where the inside turns from negative to positive. That's exactly what we're about to do. So, a smart, safe way to handle absolute values is to find the critical points where the stuff inside each absolute value changes sign. Because at those points, the behavior of the expression switches. For the left side, the inner term is x, so the sign changes at x equals 0. For the right side, the inner term is 2x minus 3, so set that equal to 0 and solve. We get 2 times x equals 3, so x equals 1 and a half. So the two critical points that split the number line are 0 and 1 and a half. Now imagine the number line cut into three regions by those two points. Region 1 is all x that are less than 0. Region 2 is all x between 0 and 1 and a half. Region 3 is all x greater than 1 and a half. We will treat each region separately. When x is less than 0, the absolute value of x becomes minus x because x is negative, right? And the absolute value of 2x minus 3 becomes minus the expression 2x minus 3 because in this region that expression is also negative. So this absolute equation becomes minus x equals 3 minus 2x. Now, this is a straightforward algebra. Add 2x to both sides and we get x equals 3. But check the region condition. We started assuming x is less than 0 while our candidate x equals 3 is not less than 0, so this candidate is invalid for this region. Therefore, region 1 produces no true solutions. Now I think you are getting how to solve it. Region 2. When x is between 0 and 1 and a half, the absolute value of x is just x, because x is non-negative here. While the absolute value of 2x minus 3 is still minus of 2x minus 3, because in this middle range, that inside expression is still negative. So the equation becomes x 
equals 3 minus 2 times x. Now add 2 times x to both sides to get 3 times x equals 3, and then divide both sides by 3 to get x equals 1. That candidate fits the region because 1 is between 0 and 1 and a half, so this is a valid solution. Awesome! Now let us consider region 3. When x is greater than or equal to 1 and a half, both inside expressions are non-negative, so each absolute value becomes the expression itself, which means x equals 2 times x minus 3. Subtract x from both sides to get minus x equals minus 3, and then multiply by minus 1 to get x equals 3. Check the region condition. 3 is indeed greater than or equal to 1 and a half, so this candidate is also valid. So region 3 gives the valid solution x equals 3. Finally, always check your solutions by plugging back in the found solutions. For x equals 1, the left distance is the distance of 1 from 0, which is 1, and the right distance is the distance of 2 times 1 minus 3, which is 2 minus 3 equals minus 1, whose distance is 1, so they match. For x equals 3, the left distance is 3, and the right distance is 2 times 3 minus 3, which is 6 minus 3 equals 3, so they match too. Okay, now before we go, let me show you how we can solve the same graphically. First, consider the left-hand side. We have the absolute value of x. We can write it as minus x when x is less than 0 and x when x is greater than 0. What is the graph of the function y equals minus x? It is like this, right? And the graph of the function y equals x is like this, isn't it? So what do you think the graph of the function y equals absolute value of x will be? For x less than 0, we have minus x, so we choose this. Then for x greater than or equal to 0, we have x, so we choose this. And therefore, we get this V-shaped curve for y equals absolute value of x. Now do the same for the right-hand side, which is the absolute value of 2x minus 3. For x less than 3 by 2, the inside 2x minus 3 is negative. So the absolute value of 2x minus 3 will be written as minus 2x plus 3. That is just a straight line with slope minus 2 and intercept 3. For x greater than or equal to 3 by 2, the inside 2x minus 3 is non-negative. So the absolute value of 2x minus 3 is simply 2x minus 3, which is a straight line with slope 2 and intercept minus 3. When you put both pieces together, you again get a V-shaped graph, but this one is shifted to the right and tilted differently compared to the graph of y equals absolute value of x. Now considering our original equation, or this, to find the solutions graphically, we look for the points where the two graphs cross each other. Those crossing points represent the values of x. If you observe the graph carefully, you will see that the two curves meet at two points, one at x equals 1 and the other at x equals 3. These are exactly the solutions we found using the algebraic method with critical points, confirming that x equals 1 and x equals 3 are the correct answers. Let me know in the comments if you can solve this equation. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also, you can support my channel by joining our community and becoming a member. So.